Welcome to Sacred Magic. Violet is on a quest to bring sacredness back into our everyday experiences. Anyone can have an extraordinary life when they're able to tap into their sacred magic within. Violet and her guests will be sharing their divine passions, inspirations, and stories of connecting with their sacred magic. We are so happy you have joined us today. Let's get started with your host, the magical creator of Discover Your Spiritual Gifts, Violet Rain. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sacred Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Violet Rain. I'm so happy to be here today. My guest is Dr. Kate Newberg. She is the founder of Books of Eden Publishing. She's the author and shamanic healer devoted to working with others in a powerful collaborative space to unlock and express their deepest soul gifts. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is our second recording because the first time we did it was so powerful. Everything shut off and the whole thing shut down and it wouldn't let us back on. So we're here to give you powerful messages for the second time around. And we're so excited to be able to chat and share our conversation with you today. So welcome, Dr. Kate. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Thank you. What an honor. I'm just in, incandescent to be here with you, Violet. Thank you so much. And seeing you again. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. And we were talking the first time, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit more, about your journey, what took you to get to where you are now, to really working on a soul level with clients and students, and share a little bit of that with us. Yeah, I'd love to. So um, as we were talking about before, and so our poor listeners who weren't there with us before, but <laughs> here they are now. Uh, I had, I was on kind of a really specific path. I had gotten my doctorate in education. I had been studying kind of the systemic nature of workplace burnout. And I was, I, I like to say I had one of those jobs that your mom is really happy about, like stability. It was a stable job with a school district in a beautiful place in Colorado. And um, I was doing really meaningful work with the school district. And at the same time, I kept feeling like there was something missing, like something that just wasn't really deeply fulfilling. And I can think of about it now as like I was at that level of competency where I was moving in the world in a way that was very competent I was I was in service but there was um, a much deeper level of soul that wasn't being touched on or nourished and I didn't have the language for that then but I all I knew was that there was something missing and so um, I didn't know how to seek for it I didn't know what it was but I knew that it was calling me, calling me to something else, something different. And what ended up happening was <laughs> I, I went to a healing ceremony that uh, a friend had recommended. And it was like, it was one of those moments of awakening. I had kind of an almost like literally overnight, a moment of awakening where I touched into that deep level of soul. And at that point, everything changed, like everything. When I went, literally, when I went back the next day, I couldn't, it's like, I didn't fit into that life that I had been living. I couldn't relate to the ambitions I'd had. Um, I couldn't even relate to the, the, the lifestyle I had, like none of it really fit anymore. And so I kind of embarked on this long journey. It, it took about five years of searching and I left the job um, and I started traveling the world, studying under different healers, um, different, just kind of really doing a one of those deep soul searching seeking of what what am i here to do give become create um and in the course of that time i wrote two books um and really started to come back into this place of um of kind of being able to know who i am and what my gifts are in a much much deeper way but it was it was a lot of <laughs> it was a lot of seeking soul searching like you could say um, I was really, uh, I was really on a, on a, on a path. It was very different from what I, the trajectory I'd been on before. So <laughs> I will say that I captured a lot of that in my, one of my books is called, um, finding home, a mystical memoir. And so, you know, we're only just touching on the surface of this and what that, what that seeking was, um, and how I came into my own soul path and healing. And so anyone who's listening, is interested in learning more about that, um, 
the book Finding Home Mystical Memoir has much more of a um a, an in-depth story about that. <laughs> so well, that's a that's a courageous, yeah. courageous journey because there are lots of people that are waking up and starting to go to work and their professions or doing their daily activities and feeling that, that space of, I don't want to do this anymore. This doesn't feel the way it did yesterday. It, it's not aligned with who I am. It doesn't fill my passions or my goals or my inspirations on where I'm going forward. And it's scary to move out of a, area that's really comfortable or that we know to go searching and letting that go. I mean, that's a, that takes somebody that has lots of courage and are willing to kind of find what's right for them. So I, I have to give you kudos because I know there are people out there listening today that are feeling those nudges or that uncomfortability or that not feeling connected to what they've known all their lives and how scary that can be for somebody in that space. I I love that you're saying that because I think um, something I've discovered in my work, um, there's a, I do shamanic healing work and I know we'll talk a little bit about that, but the truth can be really disruptive um, when we really, sometimes it's a very simple truth that's ready to come to the surface but the truth can also be disruptive. Like if we if we stand up and say this this isn't right for me, whatever this is, right? Then it really witnessed. It calls for change. And um, I'm I'm also glad you mentioned that too because one of one of the things that I endeavored in my work, like with with the books I've written, with the work I do, is um, my awakening was very abrupt and very disruptive. And <laughs> um, one of the one of the things I've tried to do is create pathways that are much gentler because uh, for whatever reason, uh, for me, it was, it was just like one day to the next, everything changes. And um, I was, I've been thinking a lot over these five years about what, what would be a gentler path toward transformation so that it doesn't have to be so stark or abrupt or jarring. And so some of the work I do too is to lead people through that process of discovering soul truth, soul paths in a more gentle way that feels supported, that feels more nourishing, more nurturing, um, so that it doesn't have to be as um as, <laughs> as crazy and abrupt as as my experience was. <laughs> but you know, I've yeah. met lots of people that <clears throat> have experience similar things to you and and some of the things that they talk about i mean even myself is my family and friends didn't understand they're like you're crazy you're leaving a profession <laughs> that pays really good money that you're in a really good place that you're seen as an expert that you may have went to school to do and all these things and you're you're saying nope I'm not interested in that anymore. I'm walking away. And I mean, it takes somebody going, okay. And I love the gentle because I've had clients come in and go, it doesn't feel good to go to work anymore. It doesn't feel good to do that work anymore, but I have to pay my rent and I have to keep the lights on and I have to do all those things and helping them transition to whatever that soul is calling them in a way that they don't go, what am I doing, <laughs> right? Because I have stability here, but there's an unknown space here that we don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, helping people kind of move through those energies to get into that space. And I've helped people do that. And it sometimes takes a little bit of time to transition. Not everyone like me, I did the same thing. I had a six figure professional position and I said, okay, I'm done. All the certifications, all the education, everything, I'm still paying on it, right? But I'm not doing that work anymore. I'm doing something else. And so... If you're out there feeling that you're not alone, there's lots of us that have successfully been able to do that. And there are ways to be able to do that shift. I love that. There's two things coming up for me right now. One is that um, there's a lot of value in knowing how to move in the world, speak 
to, uh, so one of the things I will do often is work with leadership teams to work on creating thriving organizations. And I have all the depth of my spiritual knowledge and my own journey and the language that kind of um, that other language of those competencies that we've, when we move in that world, like we create bridges in a lot of ways. And I think that's one of the things that we're talking about here. So those of us who have gone to very high levels in that world that might be um, not in resonance with our deepest values, right? But we can still move in that world. We can still speak in that world and thereby like um, create kind of levels of trust so that we can start to create bridges into those deeper spaces that are being called for. Um, and the other thing that's coming up right now, and I've talked about it in my own podcast, which is uh, When the Heart Leads. And it seems like right now to be, um, for those of us who are awake and aware and really being called into those soul gifts, it almost feels like there's a, and maybe urgency is the wrong word, but there might be an intensification of that, um, that, that message or that arising from within saying like, now is the time to start really exploring those deeper gifts because um, my, what I'm getting is that there's a much larger receptive field in the world right now for those gifts that are being called forward, those soul gifts that are being called forward. And so like, if people listening are feeling an intensification of that, it could be a, like a restlessness, it could be some nameless thing, like maybe a vague or nameless thing. Um, that's because um, your gifts are really being called forward now because there's people in the world who are really ready to receive it. I, I like to, I feel it's like a receptive field for that. So um, I've definitely been feeling that lately as well. Like there's a, there's a, an intensification of the, the parts of my life that really are in resonance with that soul calling. It's very clear. And the parts of my life that are not is also very clear. And so lifting those other parts into resonance is becoming kind of a big focus right now. And the pathway to do that is going to be different for every person. But yeah, I've definitely been feeling that lately too, um, that there's just like, it's almost like, okay, guys, it's time, <laughs> time to step out, time to come. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> I love that. Beautiful. I love that. And <clears throat> How do you tell people to recognize that soul calling? Because I think a lot of people don't always understand what that means. How do you know that your soul is pulling you in one direction or another? That is such a beautiful, um, that's such a beautiful question. One is that, um, so there is, I like to say that there's like this unique signature of energy. Like when we're working with a soul and um, like in my shamanic work, right? Uh, we talked a little bit in our first session about what a shaman is, right? And I think um, there's a lot of different ways to describe it, but where I come, where I come from is this, this belief that every person has this unique signature of energy that is their soul. And that is going to be something like when that's explored, when that's brought to the surface into our waking consciousness, that's going to be a gift that no one else can do or create or become, right? It's something only you can do, create or become. And so in my work, a lot of it is um, bringing you into those kind of those states of being that are beneath the rational kind of busy rational thought that we have right because there's a part of you always that rests in that knowing of what it is that you're here to do or become or create and so when i work with people it's like um it's br it's almost like bringing them into that state so that inner knowing can come forward and that is something it's like a, this beautiful gift and witnessing that like I'm, I probably, I, I can witness and I can draw it forward, uh, but I can't necessarily, and I can see, right. And I can, I can offer guidance. And I know this is a little abstract, so maybe I can come up with a, like a more specific um, example at some point, but I'm also talking energetically so that uh, what we can, what we can really begin in my work, what we can really begin to do is let that come forward from within you to be spoken with your own voice and your own knowing. And once you have that knowing of, of what your soul is here to do or create or become, right, that's something that can never be taken away. 
So oftentimes with my shamanic work, I'll bring you into those like deeply relaxed states of being. So you can start to tap into your true essence. And then from that place of true essence, that's when the truth of who you are emerges, right? That's when those nudges come forward, right? And it generally feels good. Like um, something that uh, something that I've been noticing is that stuff that's in resonance with my soul calling feels really good. It feels really natural. And the stuff that isn't, it doesn't. Like it's jarring. It create it's it requires a lot of effort or going kind of outside of myself to accomplish, right? And so we're really coming to rest in our deepest essence here and letting that be the guiding force in our lives. I don't know if that answered your question. Actually, no, yeah. I love that. that. I was through. making notes. Unique <laughs> signature. <laughs> Some because I'm working on a class myself and just trying to find words because there's so many words that mean the same thing you know you're talking about unique signature sometimes I call it an energetic imprint some people Ooh. call it your blueprint like your blueprint of your soul so there's lots of words your essence of who you are your I am presence and being so all those words are very similar energies to each other so I love that because I've been playing with some of those energies um, and working. So I, I, I love that description because it makes a lot of sense. So talk to us a little bit on if people wanted to work with you, because we'll have your website at the bottom. What are some of the things that you offer and, you know, your books that are out there that people can get? I assume they're also on your website where they can find them. Yes. Thank you for asking that. Yeah. So a really powerful um, calling for me is, is to, is to see with those who I work with, like that, that most powerful divine light. And maybe people don't relate to the word divine, right? Like you were saying, there's, there's different ways of approaching this. Um, but when, so there's a couple different ways I work with people, but it all comes uh, back to really lifting up this soul, this deep soul calling into conscious awareness so that that can be embodied. And once it's embodied, it becomes, it begins to shift and transform your physical reality, right? But embodiment is the first step. So um, there's a few different ways I offer that. It all comes back to this though. So one is through the one-on-one -on -one work. Um, and that's the shamanic healing. It is, there's a lot more information on my, my website about the lineages I've studied under. Um, and the way I like to talk about the lineages is that they offer kind of powerful techniques uh, to bring that soul calling forward. So there's information on those lineages, um, the shamanic lineages. So that's one-on-one -on -one work I do. And there's information there. Um, oftentimes that'll take the form of a, uh, of a, of a consultation and then a guided, a guided meditation that is perfectly tailored to like imagery and, um, deep imagery that is perfectly tailored to your questions that you want to bring forward, um, that you need answers to. Sometimes it's all about crafting the right question too. So that it's all kind of, but that's one-on-one -on -one work I do, shamanic work. Um, I also do a writing mentorship. So I have two books. I'll talk about those in a moment. Um, but the writing mentorship, often people will be able to express themselves through writing. So there's, so storytelling is really important. And so drawing out some of those, uh, some of those key moments in people's lives and, and shaping language around them allows them to tell their story in a really empowering way. So whether that gets published or not, like the writing membership, uh, mentorship often allows people to really, um, just kind of frame their story in a way that allows them to feel tr like tell the truth and feel empowered at the same time. So there's a writing mentorship. Um, and then I also, and this might seem kind of strange, but I mentioned it, I do work with leadership teams as well. So um, all of my research in workplace burnout and creating thriving workplaces, um, I don't, there might be listeners out there who uh, maybe love what they do, but see that they're, that they need some shifts in their workplace. So I do work with leadership teams on that, especially drawing from my research. Um and uh, so just quick recap, I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, shamanic work. I uh, will do writing mentorships and I will also, um, and kind of the more uh, like as a team, 
I work with, sorry, getting caught up in my words. Luckily you're editing this. <laughs> um, I will work with leadership teams as well. Um, and let's see, sorry. I'm glad you're editing this because I suddenly got caught up in my own words. <sighs> no, <Okay>. it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. You know, people love to see us. We all get in that state where, hey, my words are running faster than my brain is. So I got to keep up, right? <laughs> I, I think we all get to there and that's what makes us so human and so beautiful in those aspects. And so I love, I love those pieces about us that show the world that, Hey, I'm passionate about what I do and it comes from a heart space. Oh. Well, I love that. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that. And I've so enjoyed connecting with you and being able to chat with you and talk to you. I hope that as you release new books, as you move forward, that we'll have you on the show again. Uh, we also realize that we'll both be at the same expo in Castle Rock in April. So we'll get to meet in person. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Dr. Kate lives like very south of Colorado. So I'm looking forward to getting to meet her in person. So thank you for being on the show today. Violet, what an absolute honor and pleasure to be able to share all of this with you. You have this beautiful energy that just draws forward the kind of the lightest, most empowering words. <laughs> so <laughs> your like your presence really drew a lot of this forward. I don't think I could have had this conversation with anyone else in this way. So what a gift to be with you as well. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> And those that are watching, thanks for checking out our podcast. You can see it on many of our different channels. We hope that you'll comment, like our stuff, and also subscribe to our channels on whatever channel that you most like. We would love to see you uh, check us out in the future. Thank you, and I hope you have a sacred and magical week.